this is Maker Jerry 11 and welcome to part 5 of the Internal Combustion Engine Build Series where we take an old refrigeration compressor, hack it a bit, and turn it into an internal combustion engine using very minimal tools. So, it's looking pretty darn good as you might remember in part 4, you better go watch the other parts if you haven't already. In part 4, what we did is we built this pretty awesome crankcase out of some sheet metal and lots of JV weld, because I love JV weld. In part 3, we made this really nice head out of a Intel heatsink and then we tapped the spark plug right into it. In part 2, we drilled the ports and I explained how a two-stroke engine works. That's going to be very important in this video. Um, so you can see there's an exhaust port over here and the transfer port over here. Um, in part 1, we just hacked this thing apart. So, what we're going to be doing in part 5 is three main things. We're going to be uh, replacing the cork gasket with something a little bit thicker because I've decided that, well actually I measured the compression ratio and it's about 20 to 1 and that's far too high. So yeah, it's just not going to run at that high of compression. So what we need to do is we need to uh, basically make a spacer in between there and I have a few ideas for that. We're going to see how it goes. The second thing we're going to be doing in this video is making the intake port for the carburetor to mount onto. So originally, I was going to make a reed valve two-stroke engine. And the way that works is there's a carburetor mounted onto the crankcase, and there's a small check valve so that when the piston goes up, it sucks in fuel air mixture, and then when the piston goes back down, the fuel air mixture can't go back out. The problem with that is I have to make a check valve. And I've done that before on my other engine, and that uses several brass pipe fittings, about two or three brass pipe fittings, a ball bearing and a spring. So it adds complexity, it adds cost, those pipe fittings, brass pipe fittings are awfully expensive. So that's gonna add about $20 to the project. So I've decided to opt for a piston port two-stroke engine. So just like how the transfer passage and exhaust ports are in the cylinder, I'm going to drill a third port, which will be our intake port in the cylinder. It's going to be a bit lower so that when the back of the piston moves up, it uncovers that port, allowing the vacuum created by the piston moving up to be filled by fuel air mixture. So if you don't quite understand that, please just go look up piston port two stroke. Thirdly, what we're gonna be working on this video is the most exciting. We're gonna be giving this a little test run. That's why I've got the neon sign transformer out here because that's gonna be our ignition and we're gonna be squirting some fuel into it and see if it does anything. We will probably get some pots and bangs out of it. I don't see why we shouldn't. Um, because, I mean, it's essentially finished except for a carburetor. But anyway, let's get started by creating a new head gasket. Alright, so I'm going to show you guys a very simple way to measure the compression ratio of an engine. Put the piston at top dead center, so right about there. And I've got a syringe with water in it. So let's fill up the cylinder with water until we get to about where the spark plug would normally be. About half a milliliter of water. Now what we're going to do is put the piston at about where the exhaust port starts to open. So, I mean, that's as far down as we can really put it without the water leaking out. And I mean, when the exhaust port starts to open, that's really the only amount of compression you're going to get. So we're at right about there. Now let's put in more water. And there we go. So let's figure about 6 milliliters of water. So in total we've put 6 milliliters of water into the engine. And so we started at one half. We want to six, so that means we want to take one half, make that one, because usually a compression ratio is uh, one and a larger number. So uh, let's double everything. So we have six, double that to 12. So technically it's only about 12 to one. That's actually not that bad, but it's a little bit too high for this engine, especially since I have a very small flywheel. So I've got a few ideas how to decrease the compression ratio. Um, one is that we just need to replace this with something thicker, um, or we could put like two of these with a piece of aluminum in between, something like that. I think I'm going to scrap this because a lot of you guys pointed out that it might burn. I don't think it's going to burn because it's actually rated at like 500 degrees, but let's scrap that. So this is the first thing I'm going to try, which is some copper wire. So this is 12 gauge wire, I think. It's like just house wire. So let's cut this open and we're going to try to make a head gasket out of copper wire. I moved up to the kitchen to do a procedure on this copper wire first, which is called annealing. So what it basically is is heating up the copper wire until it starts to glow a little bit. And then when it cools back down, it'll be much softer because it relaxes all the stresses in the copper. Okay, so now our copper wire is annealed and it is really soft now. 
so that's good. It'll be easy to work with. Now let's take some steel wool and clean it off so that... Okay, so now we have some really soft copper wire, which will be easy to work with. And I've got a socket here that's about the right size of the gasket that we want to make. And so let's bend this around the socket. Oh, that's so soft. That's awesome. Okay, so now I'm going to need something that will go around this part too as well because you can see it's a little bit recessed there. So we need to go around that, unfortunately. see how that will fit together. That actually looks pretty good. So now let's file these ends so that they meet up nicely. That should look pretty good, I think. Looks like it should make a good seal. So let's put a little bit of flux on that joint there so that the solder sticks well. And that actually looks pretty good. There's a little bit of extra solder on there, but that's okay. It'll squish down because solder is really soft. All right, so here's the head gasket. So let's see if it'll seal. So after a few failed attempts, I already tried to put it together a few times. It kept moving around. So I'm going to try putting some grease on here to hopefully help it to stick better and not slide around as much because it was really annoying. All right, so let's put that on there. Oh, yeah, that's going to help a lot. All right, so now we have to just line it up just perfectly so that it's not overlapping anywhere. That looks about right. I think that will work. So let's put the head on. Carefully screw these in without moving anything, hopefully. Sounds leaky. Leaking right near the solder joint. Oh, well, that might be good. Doesn't feel like it's leaky anymore. All right, so now on to the next part of this video, which is going to be making the intake port. So I was calling this the intake port before. That's actually wrong. This is actually the transfer port because it transfers the fuel air mixture from the crankcase because that, that piston goes down, it pressurizes the crankcase, and then that fuel air mixture rushes into the cylinder once that piston moves down far enough that it opens that passage. What I need now is a way to get the fuel air mixture into the crankcase. Originally, I was going to use a reed valve, a small little check valve to let fuel air mixture in, but I decided that would add too much complexity, so I've decided to opt for a piston port engine. So instead, I'm gonna have an intake port on the side here, and as the piston goes up, it actually uncovers that port. The back of the piston acts as a valve there and uncovers that port. So as you can see, when the piston's going up, it's creating a vacuum in the crankcase. And then as soon as that port gets uncovered here, it will, fuel air mixture will get sucked in to fill that void. And then as the piston comes down, it will block off that port, pressurizing the fuel air mixture in the crankcase until the transfer port opens and fuel air mixture can then rush into the cylinder. So there's that copper gasket. It actually worked a lot better than I thought. Look at that solder though. Solder is really soft, so it just kind of squished down really flat. That is pretty nice. It doesn't even look like it marred the aluminum metal. That's pretty cool. Wow, am I so glad I put this access port here, or else I would kind of be screwed right now. Okay, so I know when the piston is at top dead center, it comes pretty much flush with the top here. So I'm going to line that up pretty much flush, the piston. And then I've got a nail here, and I'm going to scratch a line right about where I want it. So then the cylinder wall right about here. So then what I want to happen is I want to drill a hole in that goes right about there. So probably from over here I'm going to drill a hole in something like right here. So 
So I drill in right there, and it should intersect the cylinder right about where I want it to. So yeah, let's drill a hole there, I guess. All right, so I've got my good old center punch here. Best hammer ever made. All right, I'm through. Well, that might work. That ought to be good. All right, so hopefully you can see this. There's the exhaust port right there. That is the intake port, and then that is the transfer port up there. All right, now the moment you guys have all been waiting for, where we put it back together and test it out. So let's boil everything up with copious amounts of oil, of course, and keep this thing happy. I'm gonna pound this guy back on. So after a lot of adjusting this, because this is really finicky to get it in the right spot, it finally spins really easily. And you can hear that as the piston goes back, it's actually pumping a little bit, so that's good. So I think it should work. All right, so to keep this thing happy, I'm going to pour oil in here, because originally this thing, which is called a diver, uh, would have stuck into the oil in the bottom of the compressor and basically used centripetal force to force the oil into the oil galleries but that's not on here. So what I'm gonna do is just pour some oil in here. Lots of oil. And then put a cork in there. And that will keep the oil in so it doesn't leak out everywhere and make a huge mess. And uh, now everything should be nice and lubed up. It's got good compression, so I guess we're not leaking. So that's good. I think we are ready for a test. Best part, all right. No carburetor, but if we just squirt fuel into the intake, I'm guessing it should work, so. Let's try it out and find out. Okay, so we got it clamped down. Let's just see how well it turns over. Sounds pretty good. All right, so I've got a jar here with some Coleman fuel, white gas. It'd probably run on gasoline too, but I'm just gonna use this because it burns much cleaner. It doesn't stink as much. So I'm gonna suck up some fuel in this syringe and just squirt it into the intake. Let me move the piston out of the way so that it's not blocking it. And then we can just squirt a bunch of fuel in there. I don't know how much, probably a good bit actually. That's probably good. And I'm gonna coat the intake all in fuel as well. And now what I need is some ignition. So what I've got here is a neon sign transformer and I've got one lead connected to ground and then the other lead is connected to one of the terminals of the neon sign transformer. It's, so it's only putting out, I think this is a uh, 5,000 volt, so it's one of these is only putting out uh, 2,500 volts, which is probably enough. And so I'm essentially going to be running this engine on constant arc. So not a real big arc, but it's enough to s just constantly arc on, t on the spark plug. So now we just gotta hook this up to the spark plug here. And then the other one is going to be connected to ground, which is just this heat sink. And now we have, if you turn it on, yep, so I can hear the arc. You might be able to hear the arc in there, just arcing on the spark plug. That'll basically give us a constant source of ignition. And so the theory is that when the piston comes up to top dead center, kind of fuel air mixture gets pushed against the arc and it'll light it. So. So we probably need to turn this over much faster. All right, so let's uh, wrap the cord around the uh, flywheel here and give it a good pull and see what happens. It works a little bit. 
All right, so let's give it another try. So it runs for a little bit. Very smoky. Smells like a two-stroke. <laughs> It runs, oh boy. Did you guys see that? It was running, it sounds like a weed whacker or a chainsaw, the garage is filled with smoke now, oh boy. That was awesome, oh my gosh, woo! It works. See how hot the, it's not even that warm. It's a little warm. Holy cow, that looks powerful, oh boy. It was spraying oil everywhere, I have oil in my eyeballs. Probably because this, uh, this, this flywheel, because it's all like uh, metal stacked together, it just like soaks up oil and that sprays everywhere. Oh my gosh, that was awesome! Did you guys see that? Oh boy, I'm so excited! You just squirt some fuel in it. It's flooded. <laughs> I think it's just uh, uh, slightly flooded. <laughs> yeah, I put a little too much fuel in it, I think. Let's go dump that out. <laughs> That's no good. Oh yeah, only slightly flooded. I think that's why it wasn't running too good. I think fuel is just flowing into the cylinder pretty much. Whew. That's a lot. All right, so you guys made it to the end of part five of the internal combustion engine build series. It was pretty awesome getting to see it run. I gotta say, I was so excited to see it run so well and be so powerful. Like it sounded like an angry weed whacker. I mean, it was awesome. So yeah, and it seems pretty powerful too, actually. Um, I can't wait till we actually get a real carburetor on here and I don't have to manually squirt fuel in. That's gonna be what we're going to be working on in part six is building some type of a carburetor. I can promise you it's Probably gonna include lots of JB Weld. Uh, yeah, definitely. Part seven is going to be the ignition. So we're gonna make some type of a real ignition circuit that will run off of a battery instead of mains power, which is kind of a pain. Part eight, maybe. I'm looking at this stator and I'm thinking, ooh, that would probably start this thing really awesome. So I could just plug it into the AC power and it would just start and then I could unplug it and I believe that putting a capacitor on an induction motor will actually turn it into a generator. So I'm kind of curious if we could actually make this, this into basically a generator, which would be pretty awesome. Because it was certainly spinning fast enough to generate some power and it seemed fairly powerful. So it would be pretty awesome if this thing could be used as a generator. But yeah, that's coming up soon. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment, and follow my social medias, Instagram and Facebook. And as always, thanks for watching, and keep experimenting.